Hello, my name is Samson Tsoi and I'm happy to present Schumann's Chrysleriana Opus 16 and to share my own journey. This piece takes a very special place in my repertoire. Schumann composed this work in 1838. At the time, he was in love with Clara Wick. All his mind and his heart was dedicated to this person. That was a great love story. They shared beautiful moments together. They shared passion toward the music. They both were wonderful musicians. They both were composers. But that was a troubled relationship. Her father was very much against it. Moreover, this piece was written at the time. They already discovered their feelings towards each other, but still they could not be together. He wrote to Clara that I feel like I'm 18 years old enthusiast who is working on this piece day and night. I really hope that you will smile so sweetly when you will recognize yourself in this piece. The first movement is agitatissimo, which means with big agitation. The real challenge for a pianist is to be in the mood right from the beginning. This musical storm enters from the very first note and the movement of semiquavers never stops until the last bar. The whole setting is disturbing. The accents he write in the, in the right hand and the syncopation in the left hand creates a real battle between your hands. Here comes the middle section. The movement with the semiquavers is still continuing, but in a dreamy way. There is a hidden melody in the right hand. An accompaniment. The real challenge for myself, I find, to find this balance between the melody and the accompaniment. The tips of your fingers in the melody should be keen, while the wrist is relaxed. The rest should be orientated on the balance between your thumbs. You find this weight which you will transfer from one hand to another one. Personally, myself, I find this moment the most challenging. In particular, the first two lines. If you look at it, it's very simple. The tonic and the fifths. But the way he writes, the way he indicates little crescendos and diminuendos inside the phrase and sforzatis on the fifths, creates a real difficulty.
I found a way to try to think the beginning in four instead of three. What I mean? One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two. Then the tonic organically comes within one bar, and then you have a dominate. Then you have the space to make this crescendo and diminuendo and to put a sforzando on the fifth. It is important to find this phrase in the beginning. Then the rest will organically keep going in the same direction. The first intermezzo interrupts the piece, but it should never be aggressive. It is a joyful and playful with this staccato, which creates a difficulty for the pianist. First, I would start learning it legato. And then, when you have it inside your hand and you all your muscles feel the direction and the line, you can add staccato. Then Schumann repeats what he already said in the beginning. In the first version, it was a shortened one, and that was the version which Vladimir Horowitz plays. In the second, he extended the full repeat. But it's interesting for yourself to try both versions, the first one and the second one. The second intermezzo is different by the character. It is more dramatic. The challenge is here to keep two melodies in the right hand and in the left hand separately. But at the same time, they go together, but they have different waves. Be also careful with the left hand so it doesn't overwhelm the right hand. The third movement, very agitated. This agitation is electrified by the cast iron written. It can be a challenge for the pianist to find the way to phrase it, but separating and taking only the harmonies will lead you in the right direction. Taking only the harmonies will not only lead you in terms of building the phrase, but it also will stay as a proper foundation in your ears while you play everything together. The middle section has two melodic curves, two separate curves, which creates a real challenge for the pianist. Try to play only the melodic line.
the code. It is often the case with the Schumann that he asks to give us as much as we can in the beginning. And then in the code, he asks us to give even more. So he writes this Ancora Più Viva. It is really difficult because emotionally this moment is exhausting. And then you have this code which takes literally everything, but you have nothing left already. So in order to understand for yourself how you're going to build it, also try to take only the harmonies. And then you will see that he uses only few of them. And they, all of them, they play between each other. Knowing those harmonies, keeping them in your ears, will keep you to build this dramatic line in the code. Schumann was a real poet. His slow sections always are full of lyricism and they have such a distinct speaking quality. In this central moment of the Cresseriana, I can hear his personal voice coming from me. It is interesting that when I heard it for the first time, and when I listened it, and when I started playing it, I found association with other works. And in the previous cycle he composed, in Kinderstanen, there is the last moment, which called The Poet Speaks. And I will play you a little bit of the last moment from Kinderstanen, and then I will play you the Cresseriano. Of course, it's not a direct quotation, or it's, there is nothing about quotation in this, but I find that the way he musically expressed himself is very similar. In the Kinderstanen, this is the last piece, and it's called The Poet Speak. In the Cresseriana, this is the central piece of the cycle. And I really feel that this central piece of the cycle 
is his own words, the poet speaks. Interesting enough that if we look at every moment of Krishnirana, they all start either with the upbeat or with the pause on the downbeat. And the only movement which starts on the downbeat is number five. And this is probably the most uncertain one. In this moment, I personally feel Schumann's last farewell. Movement number seven, very fast. This indication of tempo, which Schumann gives in the beginning, gives us freedom and a possibility to take risks. But don't explode yourself. It can be fatal. Keeping attention on the left hand and making sure that you have these poses in between the chords will protect yourself from too much risks. This left hand also at the same time will pump the tension. You can play as fast as you want, as long as you keep hearing the movement of the semi quavers and at the same time the chords in the left hand. The last movement of Cresteriana is the most tragic one. Personally I feel that there is something which doesn't exist physically anymore but here is an impending dramatic spirit. In this moment, there is a rhythm which stays the same. Sometimes you might not recognize it, but it is there. Every performer finds his or her own associations. To me, this is the dance, but it's a dark dance. Then the same dance continues here. And then it comes back but it comes back very anxious. And then after this section, there is a big climax, big dramatic moment. Vladimir Horowitz, before playing this moment, takes a little written note, like it stops. And it has a very interesting artistic effect. 
Be careful in this climax, because the place is very dangerous. And Schumann writes, con tutta forza, which means with all your strength. The register is very low, and you can be drawn by your own emotions. So you have to be really careful in this place, but at the same time, you have to give all of yourself. Personally to me, there is no end in Chrysleriana. Hero or the movement just disappears. And it makes Grisiliani even more mysterious. Mm -hmm.